Hello friends, welcome to King's Crux, my first video based discussion and uh, let me start you with a very recent question which was asked in DNB examinations. That was this, spot the finding, what is the abnormality in this fundus picture? That was the question asked. Now let me go for another question, cherry red spot is seen in all except, is it A. Tay Sachs? B. Neiman Picks, C. Krabbies or D. Sandhoffs. To answer the first and the second question, you have to answer, you have to understand what do we mean by cherry red spot. Okay, cherry red spot is the answer for the first question. Now what is the answer for second question? You will answer that by yourself by the end of this mini lecture. So let me start with the three level discussion. First, we'll understand what is a normal fundus. How does normal fundus look like? Only then you will understand the abnormality of the fundus, that is cherry red spot. And we will answer the question, why do we have cherry red spot? What is the pathophysiology behind cherry red spot? And the final and the most important discussion, the differential diagnosis for cherry red spot. What are the causes for cherry red spot? In other words, so, the fundus is being examined with the help of a direct ophthalmoscope. Here, when the light is being shown on the eyeball, as you can see, this is the retina. The retina ends at ora serrata. Now, retina is this layer and underlying the retina is this choroid, which is vascular area. Now, retina is going to be thin. In fact, the thinnest at this area. This area is called as a macula. And the macula is going to have a central depression is called the fovea centralis and this is the optic nerve and here you have the optic disc okay we'll talk about it a bit more now this is the picture of the normal fundus and as i mentioned before this is the optic disc and this is the macula the macula is going to have a central depression called fovea okay now, if macula, when compared to the other area of the fundus, is a bit darker. The reason is because macula is thin. Therefore, when I shine the light, the underlying choroid gets reflected back. So, macula is thinner. Therefore, it appears darker when we observe via an ophthalmoscope. Now, here is the central retinal artery, central retinal vein. The artery appears to be thinner when compared to the vein. Okay? Yes. Now, let us go a bit further, the details of the fundus. Now, this is the right eye fundus. Why this is the right eye fundus? Is because here is the optic disc, which is on my right hand side. To be more technical, I would say, this optic disc is on the nasal side. This macula is towards the temporal side. Okay. Now, macula, optic disc. Now, I'm going to show you some details about macula here. Now, this is the macula. Macula lutea, what we call. It's called as lutea because of some yellowish deposits here. Okay. It is 5.5 millimeter in diameter. Okay. Macula has this central depression called fovea centralis, which is 1.5 millimeter in diameter. Okay. The diameter of fovea centralis is 1.5 equals the diameter of optic disc okay yes the fovea centralis is going to have an inner part called foveola which is 0.35 millimeter in diameter it has a central depression called umbo between the fovea centralis this area and the foveola you have foveal avascular zone here in this part okay the mcq points in this slide is the MCQ points are the macula, all these diameters are being frequently asked in the exams. Also, the distance between the foveola, understand again, the distance between the foveola, here is the foveola, and the optic disc, the temporal part or temporal margin of the optic disc, is two disc diameters. Okay, yes. There are some key MCQ points as far as fovea centralis is concerned. There are three important points. Fovea centralis is the central depressed part of macula, number one. 
Number two, fovea centralis has the lowest threshold for light. Number three, fovea centralis has the maximum sensitivity towards light in retina. In fact, it is the most sensitive part of retina. Foveola, on the other hand, foveola is contains only cones. It does not contain any other layers. So foveola has only cones. Okay. Yes. Moving on to optic disc. The diameter of disc is 1.5 millimeters. Okay. And this is the physiological cup. Okay. The cup disc ratio is 0 0.3. 0 0.3. In other words, the cup occupies 3 out of 10. Okay. Yes. This cup disc ratio of 0 0.3 is increased in, in conditions like glaucoma where there is pathological cupping. There is increase in this cup of this optic disc. Another frequently asked question. What a, uh, how many nerve fibers are there in optic nerve? It is 1.2 million nerve fibers. Okay. We will understand why do we have cherry spot. Having understood about the normal anatomy in brief. Now look at this picture very closely. Here is going to be retina, this black color. The underlying cord is blue. Here is a thinner area which is the macula and macula has its in center fovea centralis. So here is the fovea centralis. I'm going to take a cross section here like this, like this. I'm taking a cross section. I'm going to observe it from sideways. So this is the retina. This part is the retina. Okay. And this retinal pigment epithelium and this underlying choroid capillaries. Okay. Now, when I have an occlusion of the blood vessel supplying retina, what happens? There is retinal ischemia. So the retina appears pale. So the underlying choroid is going to appear very dark. Number one. Number two, when I have some storage disorders, there is going to be some deposits in the retina. Now, these deposits will occur in ganglion cell layer which is one of the layers one of the 10 layers of retina so the ganglion cells are not seen in this fovea region therefore what happens there are no deposits in this fovea so again because of deposition in the other places this area is spared relatively therefore the retinal pigment uh, therefore the choroid capillaries are going to shine through above therefore this area appears darker Therefore, why cherry red spot? Cherry red spot is an optical illusion. It occurs because of only one reason. It is a relative defect. Why? Because the retina is affected. Therefore, the underlying choroid, which is normal, is going to shine through it. Therefore, that area appears like a defect. No, but in truth, it is not so. Okay? Yes, this, this is why we have cherry red spot. Now, there are three main differential diagnoses for uh, cherry red spot. Number one is vascular occlusion. That is central retinal artery occlusion. Number two, storage disorders. And number three, blunt trauma. Now, I just discussed this now. When we have a blunt trauma, that is going to be edema in the retina, a cloudy swelling. And what we call as the Berlin's edema or commotio retinae. This is one of a very important differential diagnosis for cherry red spot. We will discuss about the first and second now. This is cherry. This is the cherry red spot as you can spot it here. It's because of central retinal artery occlusion. There is an occlusion of this artery. Therefore, the entire fundus appears very pale. Therefore, what happens? This pale fundus, the underneath, since macula is very thin, the underneath choroid layer is shining well. Therefore, this appears like a cherry red spot storage disorders now here is the most important part now lots of disorders are there it will be very confusing it is good to memorize the names but have some order or some mnemonic for you for you to remember this gm1 gangliosidosis gm2 gangliosidosis has two conditions tay sachs sandhoffs farber's disease not fabry it's farber neiman pick disease only type A and B are there, not type C. Okay, there are three types, A, B, C. Only type A and B have cherry red spot. Mucolipidosis type 1. This mucolipidosis, the children are affected with, cherry red spot is seen, but a very important finding is myoclonus. 
M-Y-O-C-L-O-N-U-S. Myoclonus is there. Therefore, we call this as Myoclonus Chariret Spot Syndrome Mucolipidosis. Here is a controversy. Now, in the Oftal books, what we read, Gauchos is given as one of the differential diagnoses for uh, Chariret Spot. But Nelson's pediatric says that you do not have Chariret Spot in Gauchos. Now, when I went for the details, it said type 1, the infantile form has cherry red spot, but whereas the type 2, the adult form, there is no cherry red spot. Okay? Now, when you have gauchos among the options, be careful. Okay? If you find even an order option, then gauchos go for that. Else, if the other conditions are given and gauchos is also given, do not choose gauchos. Okay? Now, the extra edge, you have to understand what are, you have to really read it in thorough, the various enzymes deficient in each condition. This has to be committed to memory because every year, the questions are being asked repeatedly. Okay? So, what is the answer for this question which we saw on the first? Chariot spot is not seen in? It is not seen in Krabby's disease. It is not seen in Krabby's. It is not seen in Fabry. Crabby and Fabry are grouped together. Okay? So, they, you, you, you don't see in Crabby's. Instead of Crabby's, if they would have given Gauchers, that would have been the answer. But instead of, say, Sandoff's, Goucher is given here. Crabby is also given. Choose Crabby. So, Crabby is the least wanted answer. Okay? So, I have some assignments here. Uh, what is the enzyme deficiency in Krabby's? We saw the other enzyme deficiencies. What are the enzyme deficiency in Krabby's? What are the other causes for cherry red spot? And what are the retinal layers? The anatomy of retinal detail. So that's it. We end with the first video based discussion. Uh, I hope you found it very useful. Please share your feedback in the comments boxes below. Thank you so much. See ya.